Are you stuck in silver because your teammates suck? Did you inject an enemy with a dozen rounds only for them to one-shot you? If you answered yes to any of those questions, then this video is for you. I'll be giving you a bunch of different tips and advice with things you probably never heard of before, so you can get good and maybe become a professional esports player if you have enough dedication and time to do so. Before that though, if you'd like to support the channel, consider subscribing or supporting via Patreon. Patreons get access to the Patreon-only Discord server, behind-the-scenes content, early access to videos, and more. Link in the description. Now, why should you listen to what I have to say? Who am I to tell you how to get better? Well, let me give you a backstory on my competitive past. Trust me, this might sound useless to this video, but it's not. It's got some tips in it. If you still don't care, skip to the time you see wherever on screen. Okay. Back in late 2015, early 2016, I started playing CSGO for the first time. My first ranked placement was Gold Nova 2, and I thought I was the best because all my friends placed in Silver. After a few days of playing more ranked matches, struggling to rank up, I realized that there were people that were much better than me. Weird, right? Now, I don't like losing, so I dedicated the next year and a half, two years of my life playing CSGO solely on trying to get better. Sometime during mid or late 2016, I finally hit Global Elite, which I was extremely excited for. But by that time, I also found that other Global Elites were becoming too predictable and easy to go against, and I wanted to go against harder people. But there was one problem. They were hard to find. That's when I found out about ESEA, or the Esports Entertainment Association League. Now, these days it's all about Face It, at least that's what I'm told, but back then it was all about ESEA. Just like CSGO, ESEA had a rank system, but it was separate from CSGO's ranking system. I don't remember how low you could go, but what I somewhat remember is that you could go from rank C- all the way to A+, and if you were extremely good at A+, you could be S rank, which is what all the good popular streamers and pros were. That was my goal. Just like when I started ranked CSGO, I thought this would be a cakewalk. I thought it would be as simple as hopping into ESEA's 128-tick servers, learning some new stuff, getting rank S in a couple of weeks, and getting drafted into a pro team. Yes, I was that naive. Instead, this guy right here, Mr. Global Elite Hotshot, ended up being placed in rank C. That's how ESEA was back then. Anyway, long story short, after a year and some change, I was finally able to get A+, but now they introduced another rank, rank G, which was placed in between A+, and S. While I was going for rank G, I was also playing in ESEA's Open, Intermediate, and Main tournaments trying to pass Main to get to the Mountain Dew Leagues. Sometime in late 2017 or early 2018, after seasons of hard work going for rank G and MDL, I got burnt out and never played the game since. And that's the first few tips. Make sure you're having fun because if you're not, not only will you burn out, but you'll also get angry easily too. With every game, there's a balance you need to meet and you need to find what that balance is for you. The other tip is to always go against harder enemies. You'll never get better playing against scrubs, but we'll get more into detail about that later. Now, I never ended up getting drafted into a pro team, nor was I noticed by them, I think, but I'll give myself props for being in the same individual skill level as them. Now, I'm sure they'd wreck me with their full team versus me and a bunch of randos, or even with my team, but when it came to Pugs, which I think was the name for ESEA's ranked matchmaking system, I was constantly beating pros I matched against, so I think I'm pretty okay. All right, now that the story is out of the way, let's get down to business. First, let's start with the basics. Go to your Windows search bar, type mouse settings, click additional mouse options, click pointer options, and disable enhance pointer precision. What this does is it turns off mouse acceleration. If you don't know what that means, basically when you move your mouse, Windows will adjust your DPI based on your initial movement speed. This is bad if you want to be able to predict where your cursor is going to land. You'll always want it to be at the same DPI no matter how fast or slow you move your mouse. Next, if you're rotating from one side of the map to another, or you're entry fragging, don't just run around aiming mindlessly. Make sure your crosshair is always at headshot level. This is beneficial because if you're going around a corner and you suddenly see an enemy in front of you, it'll be easier to lock onto their head. And when you're approaching a corner, make sure to always aim at the corner of a building or whatever corner you're approaching. So if an enemy suddenly pops up in front of you, you can easily counter strafe, there's little to no mouse movement, and you can give them a free haircut. And while we're talking about counter strafing, counter strafing is when you're moving one direction and quickly tap the key to move the opposite direction to stop your character quicker, rather than just releasing the key and your character slowly slides to a stop. For example, say I'm wrapping around a corner and see an enemy. 
Instead of just releasing the movement key and letting the character slowly come to a stop, quickly tap the opposite direction key, but don't hold it, just tap it then take your shots. This is necessary to mostly guarantee your first shot goes where you're aiming at. I say mostly because depending on the game, some guns have poor first shot accuracy whether you counter strafe to a stop or weren't even moving at all. Also, when you're getting ready to counter strafe, it's best to use as little direction keys as possible. For example, say you're wrapping around a corner and you see an enemy. Instead of moving laterally with the W and A key, then having to counter using the S and D key, it's just easier having to worry about counter strafing with one button instead of two. You don't always want to do it this way, but it can be very useful. Get into the habit of doing it both ways and find out what works best for you for certain situations. Next, know your guns. In games like CSGO and Valorant, you have a predictable spray pattern that you can counter. Go into the training grounds, spray your entire magazine, and analyze, study that pattern. What you'll want to do is counter that spray pattern so that all your bullets land in the same spot instead of all around the enemy. This will get some time to get used to, but once you got it down, you'll be able to spray and get kills rather than just shooting bullets all around the outline of their entire body. Spraying isn't always the best option though. It's good if you have two or more enemies pretty close to each other and you think you can take them both out, but if you see an enemy in the distance, don't just spray willy-nilly and try to counter that pattern. Get into the habit of tapping. For long-range fights, it's much easier semi-auto firing your weapon whether it's a headshot or multiple body shots rather than trying to counter a spray pattern from a long-range distance. Close or medium distance though? Spray and pray, baby. When flicking, try not to flick and spray. Try to flick one tap, then immediately start spraying right after. At least maybe. Some people do better with either styles when it comes to this, so figure out what works best for you. Next, know your game's mechanics and nail that mechanical movement down. If you can't figure out how to properly move your character like a pro, then you're going to be at a major disadvantage. This varies from game to game, so look up videos specific to the game you're playing. Next, try to hold angles as far as possible. Your character's camera, aka what you're seeing, comes from a single point on your character's body, but you still have your character's entire body to worry about. So if you're hugging a corner or an angle, sometimes you can't see the enemy, but they can see you. And that creates some BS situations where you're like, where the hell was the enemy? What you want to do is just move back a little bit so your body isn't sticking out through a wall, giving away your position to the enemy. This is just a way to avoid annoying deaths. And if possible, you want yourself as far from the wall as possible with your enemy as close to the wall as possible. One way to achieve this is by forcing them to go a certain path by using your utilities, such as grenade, molotovs, your fire hands, etc. If you're wrapping around a corner and you're not super close to the wall, this can make it easier for you to get an entry, a kill, whatever, since everything in front of you is moving slower, making it easier for your brain to process everything that's happening than if you were much closer to that wall. However, if you find yourself in the position where you're forced to peek close against the corner, make sure you peek fast, not slow. If you want to know more about this whole thing, I'll leave a link in the description on a video I watched back in my CSGO days. Speaking of angles, learn predictable angles and enemy positions. For example, at the start of the round on this map, a lot of people like to hold either the left or right side on B site. Contrary to what I said earlier, you don't always need to have your crosshair locked to a corner. If you think you know where an enemy might potentially be, pre-aim, peek, counter strafe, and shoot. Learn off angles as well. You don't want to be in the receiving end of a pre-aimed shot. Instead of being in a predictable spot where you might get pre-aimed, move a few steps left or right and that could really throw the enemy off. Another one is comms. Now, this should be obvious, but listen for enemy footsteps. If you're trying to, but you're in voice chat and someone's talking too much or too many people are talking about nonsense that has nothing to do with callouts, say or yell comms as many times as you need to. It's a polite way to say shut the fuck up so I can listen. Speaking of teammates, trade your kills. Try to put yourself in a position where if you die, you have someone right behind you who can trade your death right after. This could be double entry fraggers, support players, whatever. And if you're the person behind your teammate, you need to follow your teammate. Just don't go randomly all over the map. Because if your teammate dies, he's relying on you to trade that kill. Try not putting yourself in a position where your teammates can't trade because you're too far ahead or they're too far behind. It's better being in a 4v4 because your teammate traded rather than you Leroy Jenkinsing it and now your team is down one man. Other ways to trade is with crossfires. If you're the terrorist and you've planted the bomb and you're going to the enemy rather than waiting, stop. Set up a crossfire. 
Whether the enemy comes and kills you or your teammate, you still have that one person left to shoot their back, ensuring that there's no chance for them to wipe you out one by one. This is especially critical in high skill level games or with enemies way above your MMR carrying their entire team. Next, be ballsy, but in a smart way. Take this clip for example. I knew that I had just killed Cypher right after he put his little circle wall down and that no one would be able to see me defuse. So as soon as I killed him, I jumped down and stuck the defuse. Ultimately I died, but it would have been a success if the wall was there for just a half a second longer. These are some of the calculated risks you should be taking, and the more you do it, the more you'll get better and understand what you can and can't do successfully. Now back to what I mentioned in the beginning, don't go against scrubs. If you're always going against people that suck, of course you're going to win, but you're not going to get better. In fact, you'll probably get worse. Going against harder individuals or teams, whether their aim is much better, their strats, their movements, whatever, exposes you to things you might not have seen before and you can learn from that. Not only that, but think of this as bodybuilding. If you want to get bigger, you need to keep working with heavier weights. The same applies to gaming. If you want to get better, you got to go against harder enemies. Now, this can be pretty demoralizing, especially if you keep getting wrecked. So if you're depressed about your performance, well, try not to be, seriously. But if you want a confidence boost, then go ahead and play against some scrubs for a bit, then go back to the harder enemies. You'll feel a bit refreshed. Next, don't fall for the same thing twice. If you die to an enemy in a certain way, you better believe that they're going to keep doing it. Don't keep giving them free kills. Instead, assume that they're going to do the same thing, adjust your strategy, then make your move. It doesn't even have to be a drastic change. You could do most things the same way with some minor adjustments and throw them off completely. If you still aren't having any luck after a few rounds, well then try something completely different. Next, spectate better players. When I was a noob, the quickest way I rapidly improved by far was by watching pros in tournaments through Twitch, YouTube, and live at ESL1 New York. Watching better players helps you understand what you aren't doing, what you can do, what you can improve, and so on. You really will learn a lot from just watching somebody do something, throwing grenades a certain way, etc. This is critical. One thing you really can't improve by watching though is your aim. In which case, a really good way to improve your aim is with aim trainers like custom maps or any non-lethal targets that are moving. Now those were the more common tips. Here are some less common things that most people don't know about. Number one, when you're in a tense gunfight, try to keep your trigger finger as light as possible. You might not realize it, or maybe you don't even do this in the first place, but in tense spray situations, some people, including my previous self, end up pushing the mouse into the mouse pad harder than we should. Pushing the left mouse button harder doesn't make your bullets do any more damage. It'll just make it harder for you to move your mouse if you're trying to counter a spray pattern or just aim in general. Two, make sure your DPI and sensitivity is set to something that isn't balls to the walls high. I, for example, use 400 DPI all the time, my Windows pointer speed is set to 6 out of 11, and my sensitivity in Valorant and CSGO is 0.5. So my effective DPI or eDPI is 200. That's pretty slow from what people tell me. When I first started using it, it was pretty slow and I hated it. I was used to being able to spin my character a few times by moving my mouse just a few inches. But having that kind of sensitivity is just not good for long range fights or maybe even medium range fights. So go ahead and lower your sensitivity a bit and you'll probably get used to it after a few days like I did. I immediately noticed myself performing better after a day or two. With my setup, it's high enough for me in close range fights, high enough to flick accurately, and it's super easy to aim in long range fights. Now, I'm not saying you need to set your mouse settings as low as me, but it's probably best since that's what the majority of CSGO and Valorant pros use. I think they're onto something, despite the fact that a lot of Valorant pros are from CSGO. If you end up getting rid of your high DPI and sensitivity habit, start learning how and when to pivot your arm or your wrist. You want to move your arm for large turns and you want to use your wrist for micro movements or corrections. This gives you the flexibility of being able to hit close and long range targets. Three, make sure you're in a good mental and if possible, a good physical state as well. When I see people make these kinds of videos, I never hear them mention this. Mentals in particular play a big part. Have you ever watched a movie and heard one of those cheesy, you can do it speeches? It's true, being mad and dwelling about something subconsciously puts your game down, whether you realize it or not. Trying to stay as positive as possible helps you perform better. On top of that, if you get angry when you die or you're an angry person in general, forcing yourself to stay calm rewires your brain and eventually you'll always be in a better mood in general. This helps you not just be better at the game, but a better teammate as well. 
No one wants a rager in their team. Number four, breathe and breathe calmly. Maybe. In tense situations, you might not realize that you've either stopped breathing or your breathing is stupid fast. If you're not breathing, you basically can't think because you're cutting the oxygen supply to your brain. Other times, you might be breathing too fast, which you might also have a very high heart rate at this point. Sometimes this can be good, sometimes this can be bad. Just try to regulate your breathing to whatever you think works best and basically go your way. Number five, do some exercise. Now, you don't need to be in the best shape possible like Pasha biceps, love you Pasha, but doing some regular exercise helps you control your body better and as you can possibly imagine, that includes your arms. Doing some push-ups during a match make or a loading screen is fine enough. You can also buy some other stuff like dumbbells or other weights to keep yourself active. Just don't forget about leg day. Also, while you're at it, try not to eat foods that'll make you fat or foods that'll slow you down. If you eat garbage that slows you down, then you're going to slow down. What I'm trying to say is just make sure you have a good diet. Doing both of these things will ensure that your body is going to have more energy and your brain is going to function better as your body is moving oxygen more efficiently. Also, make sure you get enough sleep. Okay, now the last section is equipment. Yes, equipment does matter. I'm not gonna go too in depth on this because I'm sure most of you know, if not all of you by now, that better equipment means better performance as long as you have the skill level to back that up. I'll also leave links in the description for good budget, mid-range, and high-end options, depending on your budget. Just know that if you're looking for the best and the cheapest, that doesn't exist. If you want the best, you're going to need to spend more money. First, choose a mouse that has no smoothing or acceleration, fits your hands comfortably, and has an amount of weight that you feel comfortable with. Lighter isn't always better for some people, so experiment with what works best for you. Second, get a giant mouse pad. It doesn't have to be a desk mat like mine, it could just be a big mouse pad. But the more mouse pad area you have, the less you accidentally slide your mouse off the mouse pad, which could potentially ruin the end result of the match. Third, if your mouse pad doesn't fit in your desk, either take stuff off of your desk, or if your desk is already small, get a bigger one. And while we're talking about desks, if your desk is height adjustable, which would be really beneficial if it is, and it doesn't even have to be automatic like mine, then experiment with whatever height along with whatever chair height you can do to make the desk and sitting position feel as comfortable as possible. If you get to your desk and you don't feel right, it's time to adjust. And last but most definitely least, make sure you have good posture. Don't get used to playing games like this. Sometimes I do this, sometimes I don't. It really just depends if I catch it or not, but try to catch yourself in a bad posture and correct it. Get used to playing with good posture so you're not a hunchback by the time you're 30 years old. And that's pretty much all I got for y'all. If there's something I missed, go ahead and comment it, even if it's the most basic things, and I'll add it to a pinned comments so people don't have to go searching for it. Anyway, thanks for watching. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like. If you guys disliked it, leave a dislike. Consider subscribing or supporting me on Patreon. And as always, have a great day every day. Peace.